Devil Boats. This is the name given to patrol torpedo boats, or PT boats for short, by the Japanese in the Second World War, for the damages they inflicted on other naval assets during the dark hours of the day. In this video, we will be discussing the brief yet impactful history of the PT boats in the Second World War. Specifically, we will be discussing the American PT boats, as several allies also had their own patrol torpedo boats, or just utilized the American ones. The PT boat concept itself was not new to the Second World War by any regards. In fact, its lineage starts far before that. Early ideas of attaching explosives to rowboats in the American Civil War properly developed into motorized crafts in the First World War, where it was then that technology finally caught up and you had a fast and hard-hitting motorboat that could deliver torpedoes quickly upon the enemy. The US Navy then realized it needed a craft that could deliver swift damage to enemy vessels of all kinds. So in 1938, the Navy hosted a design competition for small boat builders to create a 70-foot motor torpedo boat and a 54-foot motor torpedo boat. When the competition was completed, numerous contracts were awarded. However, the 80-foot long Elko and the 78-foot long Higgins were the most prevalent. Although there were numerous manufacturers, the engines remained the same. They used three modified Packard 3A 2500 V12 engines. Originally intended for airplanes, these were modified for maritime use. Over the course of the war, these engines would be modified to increase its performance. These engines had an extremely high amount of fuel consumption, so they carried 3,000 gallons of aviation-grade fuel. Thus, the top speed varied anywhere from 39 knots to 44 knots, depending on the model the engine used. These boats had a planing hole to assist the craft in being able to skim across the surface of the water at speed. A design that is still around today, these boats had a very shallow draft that allowed them to venture into areas larger vessels weren't able to, as well as make them harder to spot on the horizon due to their size. As the war would progress, several dramatic stories have been told about the damages that these boats can take and still remain afloat like future President John F. Kennedy's PT-109 being cut in half and staying afloat for numerous hours afterwards. This is due to its construction focusing on double-layered wood held together by a multitude of rivets or screws, and containing a cabinet layer in between the wood ones. This design kept it lightweight as well as made after-action repairs quite easy. The cockpits were also armored against small arms fire. The boats could hold up to three officers and 14 enlisted men. However, the size would often vary between 12 and 17 depending on the boat's loadout of weaponry. Prior to mid-1943, the boats used the Mark 8 torpedo. These weighed in at 2,600 pounds and carried 466 pounds of TNT in the warhead. They had a range of 16,000 yards with a max speed of 36 knots or 41 miles per hour. After mid-1943, the newer Mark 13s would be used. They were substantially lighter at 2,216 pounds and they carried 600 pounds of a Torpex filled warhead. They had a range of 6,300 yards and a max speed of 33.5 knots or 38.6 miles per hour. They could also be fitted to carry Mark VI death charges and rarely naval mines. The dual twin M2 50 caliber machine guns located on both sides of the boat are another notable feature, and depending on the time of the war, one or two 30 caliber machine guns on pedestal mounts would also be found. A 20 mm Orlikan cannon was another common addition, which would have been mounted on the stern and later on on the midships or the forward deck. Eventually, the 40mm Bofors gun would be added to the aft deck to further increase the firepower. The crews would also add their own weaponry as they saw fit, such as additional cannons, rockets, mortars, and machine guns. The PT boats saw usage in almost every single theater of war, from Alaska following the attack on Pearl Harbor to the Mediterranean battling German S-boats. The main claim to fame from PT boats was their night attacks in the Pacific. The Japanese quickly realized the Allies had air superiority. As a result, they turned to nighttime transports of supplies and manpower. During the Solomon Islands campaign, PT boats rained terror on these transports and vessels. The Japanese had the deadly Type 93 torpedo, which was extremely effective. Meanwhile, the American Mark 8 was notoriously unreliable. But the Japanese didn't know that and aired caution when deploying capital ships to areas with torpedo boat presence, thus further leading to the effectiveness of the patrols. So-called barge busting was another key area of success. As both Japanese and German forces lost transports to allies in the day, they turned to shallow draft barges in efforts to resupply their lines. The thought process was these crafts would avoid larger vessels as they would be running aground if they followed them. But PT boats didn't have that issue and greatly reduced the effectiveness of the barges. They saw heavy usage during D-Day, specifically along the Mason Line. They were there on the lookout for German S-boats as well as providing life-saving operations. Over the course of the war, it's hard to pinpoint exact numbers of PT boat victories due to a variety of factors like destroying of records by the Japanese, faulty torpedoes, and exaggerated claims. During the war, they suffered approximately 99 losses out of 531 being produced. 
Although they had great success, after the war many were destroyed due to upkeep costs and high fuel consumption in peacetime. Despite that, quite a few remain functional as museum pieces today. I highly recommend a visit if you are near one of the crafts such as PT-305 at the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. That's going to wrap up another video, and I've been on a seafaring kick recently, so I plan to do a video on the DD tank next. And also at this time, we're about to cross 50 subscribers. That's still an extremely large number for me, and I thank all of you for that. And I plan to do a Q&A stream sometime in the near future, as would like to get to know you better as a viewer. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy, and with that said, I'll catch you in the next one.